Several key companies are integral to the creation of these ASICs. They grow and thrive together. When we look at that company, even if they receive customized orders, they can incorporate various IPs and produce excellent results. Hello everyone, it's great to see you. I'm Anbel Engineering Era. In our previous session, we talked about why big tech companies turn to Broadcom for designing their own AI chips, specifically focusing on the critical technology of CERDES, Serializer Deserializer, IP. Today, I will explain how this technology not only facilitates networking from chip to chip, but also extends to the entire server network. I mentioned that Broadcom supports the entire lineup in various formats. And today, I would like to discuss the process of creating custom AI core chips, which are often referred to as custom chips, or ASICs. This intricate process involves utilizing a variety of IPs and protocol IPs, such as Ethernet IP, to specifically meet the unique demands of big tech companies. Today, we'll explore why Broadcom excels in manufacturing ASIC chips and delve into the detailed process behind their development. Furthermore, we will identify other companies that have the potential to grow alongside Broadcom in this sector. Before we start, thank you all for loving the Anbel Engineering hoodies. I highly recommend them as group hoodies for year-end gatherings. As you know, I do not run any membership program. If you ever find yourself needing one or considering it as a gift, please feel free to ask. Now regarding AI chips, Broadcom has already achieved a significant milestone by developing what they call a 3.5D XPU. It's essential to understand that Broadcom was the pioneer in introducing the concept of the XPU, making a notable impact in the industry. It's essentially a broad term that encompasses various processing units, often referred to as NEPU. We have CPUs, GPUs, and now NPUs. But Broadcom has taken a significant step further by introducing a new type of processor for data centers, which they are calling XPU. This processor is specifically designed to support the demanding workloads in high-performance computing, as well as applications in AI and machine learning. In particular, what you are looking at here is the 3.5D packaging, which is planned for release in 2026. And this involves integrating 3D with 3D to create a 3.5D stack that includes a 12-layer HBM. If you look closely, you can see various chips interconnected in a chiplet structure, which might be a bit hard to notice at first. For TIA's GPU, they employ silicon or Aldel interposers, utilizing TSMC's cores, as I've detailed in several of my videos. They sell GPUs and HBM connected through 2.5D packaging using this technology. Hopper is an example, and Blackwell will be sold similarly. Moving a step beyond the traditional approach of connecting HBM and XPU in a 2.5D structure, they have now introduced a processor that can also be integrated into a three-dimensional architecture. This new design eliminates the need for TSV, allowing for direct connections that significantly enhance the interconnect density between tiles, thereby achieving much higher throughput. This is a new packaging technology planned for 2026. Who are they working with? TSMC. That's what they're discussing. However, while aspects like packaging or the use of 2.5D XPU are important, fundamentally, TSMC and Intel are very strong in the packaging domain. What we need to understand from Broadcom introducing these XPU-based designs is that Broadcom can ultimately design highly integrated chips. These chips have the capability to combine various components such as HBM, GPUs, and MPUs seamlessly, which is the key aspect here. By using advanced processes like TSMC's 3 nanometer, they can integrate and achieve packaging such as 2.5D or even 3.5D. Of course, they won't handle everything themselves. By working in partnership with TSMC, we possess the expertise to create these tailor-made ASICs, designed to fulfill specific and intricate demands. Additionally, when examining the design process using the XPU platform, it initially seems to take several years. However, with the integration of automated design flows and AI-driven optimization, the efficiency of the process is greatly enhanced. AI-related intellectual properties, encompassing silicon-based, firmware, and software support, are integral to this optimization. They also offer extensive support for various system-on chips. So how do they move forward? They collaborate with consumer artificial intelligence clients to develop solutions over a time frame of seven to nine months. Does that make sense? Up until now, Broadcom has been utilizing its extensive range of IPs and automated design processes in various configurations. They engage in core development partnerships with leading companies like Google, Meta, OpenAI, and ByteDance, also known as TikTok, who are eager to design their own AI chips. This collaboration spans the entire development journey. Then, they immediately put it into FAM, claiming that it could be produced at TSMC. Doesn't it seem like they have a processor precisely tailored to design the AI chip that the company desires? In order to understand why this is feasible, it is crucial to first clearly define and thoroughly grasp the concept of customization. Take Google for example. They have many TPO versions. Various TPOs are released every two to three years. 
Recently, the pace has increased, with performance varying greatly. TDP figures are not always disclosed, and the HBM versions keep evolving. The capabilities are advancing, and the memory bandwidth is increasing. The interchip bandwidth is also improving. Different versions have varying requirements, so the memory bandwidth changes, and chip-to-chip -chip throughput varies as well. The TDP requirements will also differ, among other factors. There are various conditions to consider. For instance, NVIDIA will tailor the H100 or H200 to their specific needs, and AMD will do the same. Intel's Gaudi 2 and Gaudi 3 will follow this approach. Broadcom, on the other hand, meets the unique specifications of big tech companies like Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, Meta, ByteDance, and Apple. There will be specific specifications for these companies, and if they want to create something with particular features, they need to use certain IPs or the specific CERDs I explained last time. Within the XPU design, they need to use specific CERDs for different functions, such as memory controllers, chip-to-chip -chip interfaces, and networking like Ethernet. Given that they possess a diverse and extensive range of IPs, they can recommend various ways to piece them together, much like assembling Lego blocks, which enables them to collaborate closely and develop the solution together. Therefore, the core components of Google's TPU, such as the AI processing unit, matrix operations, transformer optimizations, vector operations, and variable precision floating point calculations, are meticulously customized and optimized to address the specific requests and unique requirements of each individual client. By collaborating, they have the ability to enhance performance while minimizing power consumption. So, if we look at the roles of different companies in the ASIC development process, not only Broadcom and other big tech companies are involved, but there are also essential companies that are crucial to this process. These companies grow together. When you look at these companies, designing an ASIC essentially means creating the semiconductor chip in the form we want, right? So the first step from that angle is to ask companies like Google and Apple, hey, what kind of semiconductor chip are you looking for? This is akin to discussing the kind of house you envision before you start building. It should have two stories and five bathrooms. Two master bedrooms are enough. The kitchen should be at least five pyong. These are the kinds of requirements that might come up. When they specify those requirements, Broadcom would say, ah, to have five restrooms, you would need several such units. Each of these items in the SODS will have an agreement on the estimated power consumption. And once the entire power setup is in place, the monthly electricity bill will be roughly estimated. For the safety and security of the house, you might need to install fences or password-protected door locks. These are essentially features, right? There are IPs such as AS and security-related IPs. This is the collaborative process of defining the specifications. So the goal is to finish a prototype in about a year and share it. In the case of HBM, although it's called custom HBM, the general specifications are somewhat predetermined. Since ASICs have a high degree of freedom, you can consider the HBM specifications to be relatively fixed. Modules like HBM3E or HBM3 are somewhat standardized. You might decide to use HBM3E and incorporate components like capacitors. We can discuss aspects like bandwidth and capacity to meet certain requirements. Based on these discussions, we might use specific types of memory. And for AI-related computations, for example, NVIDIA could use tensor cores or transformer engines. Google might use tensor cores for tensor processing with their TPUs, and Apple could leverage their NPUs. They need to decide how to configure the overall architecture based on the von Neumann architecture for memory and computing interactions. Primarily, customers will handle the design. Then, AI engineers from big tech companies and hardware design engineers will discuss how to design it, including decisions like the size of L1 and L2 caches. They will have detailed discussions on how to design the prototype, including the IPS mentioned last time, and how chips will communicate with each other. Which version of PCIe will be used and what IP will be chosen for networking Ethernet? This isn't all. It's called PMU commonly called a power management unit. It manages power and reduces consumption. What kind of IP will be used? And for security protocols, will AS be used or something else? Additionally, to link these components, there are internal buses such as AXI. These are the various aspects that need to be carefully decided one by one. Among the myriad of IPs available, Broadcom has an extensive collection of network IPs, such as CERDES and PCIe, which requires a thorough collaborative process to determine the best configuration. Through this collaboration, they can make specific recommendations, such as the necessary memory bandwidth to avoid bottlenecks during interchip processing, thereby gradually refining and perfecting the architecture. Therefore, in the process of determining these specific IPs, Broadcom, which has an extensive range of IPs, particularly possesses the capability to design AI chips. This includes discussing components like PCIe or CXL switches, as well as CXL memory storage, such as SSDs, Ethernet and ICs, and how CPUs and GPUs communicate with each other effectively. When planning the entire architecture, we need to decide on which IP to utilize and which ones to source from Broadcom. 
For example, if we aim to implement high-speed Ethernet, we must obtain the Ethernet IP from Broadcom. Likewise, if we need PCI Express IP, we must secure its license. Additionally, to meet the specific performance or specification requirements set by big tech firms, each IP must be tailored accordingly. As I mentioned last time, there might not be a perfect IP for this SERDES. In that case, since Broadcom excels in this type of design, they would customize the SERDES to fit the requirements, define the module interfaces, and determine how to use those interfaces accordingly. Once the entire design is completed, they will verify whether everything flows well together, including the GPUs, and finalize the architecture. After that, the actual manufacturing process begins. Deciding how many matrix operations to perform is something that Google or the customers need to design, right? Given certain specifications, we proceed to design them. This is referred to as RTL design, a topic covered in computer architecture classes for engineering students. This operation is articulated in a specific programming language. With each clock cycle, particular actions are delineated. For instance, during one clock tick, you can define the computation between these matrices. This is referred to as logical design, where you specify functionalities rather than physically arranging fins. Matrix operations are performed occasionally. Once done, data is sent via PCI Express, or something is fetched from memory next. Defining these functions is part of the logical design phase. After the logic is laid out, we move on to the physical design phase. In this phase, we physically arrange the design functions. We assign specific functions to specific areas. This placement is crucial, especially when two frequently used functions need to interact. But if you place them too far apart, it all results in power consumption. So, it's important to position them correctly. Here, the most commonly used ones are very well-known companies like Cadence and Synopsys, right? Here, we make decisions on how to physically place the components and how to design the wiring in detail. The placement of the chip and the arrangement of power and signal lines need to be considered. If the timing is insufficient when signals are transmitted from one point to another, the layout must be adjusted. This process involves not just functional verification, but also physical layout design. So, after we finalize the entire layout, we then proceed to utilize tools from companies such as Synopsys or Cadence in order to thoroughly verify the layout we have meticulously created. To ensure the chip operates as intended, various test vectors can be used. Alternatively, it can be verified with specialized software. To ensure everything is correctly made, the final step involves sending the design files to TSMC. TSMC will then use these files to determine how to fabricate the wafers, including decisions on the number of layers and the etching process. Broadcom utilizes the latest TSMC technologies, such as 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer processes for these tasks. Given their expertise in designing XPUs and considering packaging solutions, they are well equipped to manage customized orders by integrating their own diverse IPs to produce high quality products. Additionally, they can create several samples and use testing equipment, referred to as AT. Using these elements, the wafer is fabricated and tested for performance. TSMC mainly handles this process. The prototype then verifies the results going back and forth. Can you picture it? Since Broadcom has been involved in the Surdays business for an exceptionally long time, they have managed to establish a comprehensive set of IPs for various communication technologies such as Ethernet, optical communication, PCI Express, and chip-to-chip -chip communication, which are all crucial for ensuring rapid data transmission. Moreover, with the capability to handle multiple layers, they possess significant core expertise. They can tailor various AI chips, leveraging their experience in packaging and process optimization. When big tech firms provide the core designs, they efficiently modularize them. They assemble the chips like building with Lego blocks to meet the desired specifications. As the utilization of these custom-designed chips continues to expand, companies like Synopsys and Cadence, which provide EDA tools and proprietary IP, are expected to gain more prominence and recognition. This is driven by the increasing demand for ASIC chips from major players such as NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, and Broadcom as the industry evolves. The demand for verification tools is anticipated to surge dramatically, driven by the widespread adoption of AI and automation. This surge in interest from major tech companies towards Broadcom suggests that it could reassert its prominence in the semiconductor sector. Each of these tech giants will need to validate various types of equipment, including AT equipment. If demand increases, we will certainly ramp up production. As these devices evolve, we can expect significant advancements in technology. This concludes part two on Broadcom. I am Anbel Engineering Error. Thank you.